Right, so everyone, welcome to another stream. How are we all doing? How are we doing? Um, right, so let's get set up. So last stream, we still have the same screen as we did when we got Vulcan uh, first, first starting up, but we added support for textures and buffers in the API. And we also, what else did we do? We also started on the synchronization code for resources. So this will mean that we'll be able to do multiple dispatches and not have two compute shaders trying to run at the same time and get in race conditions. So the plan today is to finish that off and then start on, um, start on making an upload buffer so we can actually put data on, on those resources that we can create, right? Um, so let's, uh, let's make a start on finishing this thing off. Mm, the rear. Um, wait, is my font too big? Is that right? Okay, here we go. Mm, it's a bit glary on my screen. Let me just uh, sort the blind situation. Okay, how's the green screen? Green screen is good. Cool, hope everyone's doing good today. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the GPU, GPU H, just to sort of remember what we were doing. So remember last stream we added this resource type. We've got three or four different types of resource. We've got buffer, texture 2D, 2D array and 3D, because this is probably what we would ever need, right? Um, and then we added these initialize and or buffer initialize and texture initialize and you get back a resource ID, right? Um, yup. And we actually implemented all of these, right? And now we've added this as well with this access mode where you can have a read only, read write, write only, and write only no overlap. And you basically synch synchronize on the resource manually when you before you dispatch, and then that will say that hey, we need to we're, we're going to read from this textual right to that one, right? Um, and we're going to do it manually to start off with, but we can probably automate this because HCC has some metadata, which is super cool. It actually pa passes out reflection information, um, which gives you basically if something is like this is a write only texture that's happening on these uh, for the clear shaders resources. We've got them all here. Um, it can read the constants that you upload and it can be like, oh, there's a texture there. So maybe we, we and it gives you reflection information. So maybe we can use that reflection information to maybe automate this process as well, which would be pretty cool. Um, hey, Redline, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. Font looks good. Any issue I can see is you're using Vim. Uh -huh. That's pretty solid. Sweet. Excited to see the C as a shading language in play. Yeah, I'm using NeoVim. But I've just aliased Vim as NeoVim because that's my, that's my, that's what I learned initially was Vim and it's the muscle memory. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm interested to actually build a ton of shaders using this shading language, but we've got one already. It's very basic, but it, it's, uh, so you define these structures here, the same file is included in, in this CPU side of things as well. So we can set these constants when we run the shader. But here's our clear shader right now. This just clears a whole texture basically. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Just waiting to actually write some more substantial code in it, other than the test sample code we already have, um, which I can link. So check out this sample directory here 
all these C files in this directory are samples. So we've got like a, a voxel ray tracer in here, right? As an example, I'll drop that in the chat if you're interested. Um, all right, 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 right. So basically, we're implementing this guy. We were implementing GPU, GPU, C, right? Um, so what this one is saying is, mm, yeah, so what we're saying is, if it's not got, um, if it's not got no overlap set and one of them is writable, like, the previous state of this resource was writable or the current one is writable, right? So you can imagine, let's get some Milton graph going. Yeah, here we go. Um, no, not this one. Imagine we have a dispatch and then we have another dispatch before here. <coughs> There's a texture. And if this writes to it and then this one reads from it what we're saying is like if this one is right or this one is right then we need to put a proper synchroni synchronization in here when we do this next dispatch so here we're going to write some codes basically track a resource um, so when we next call dispatch we're going to put in a barrier right Hey Perry, I'm not late, I'm on time, what are you talking about? Maybe it was two minutes. The stream was running at 26 past. How, how's, how's Perry going? How's my Perry doing? And also Perry, I remember you saying you miss triangles. Well, I can't wait until the day where I reveal exactly what we're doing for the graphics research and development, but I think, I think you're gonna be happy when we when we replace triangles with something else. I think you're gonna be happy. So remember this moment when I said this and wait wait until we get there and and all things will make sense. You're sticky. Yeah, I get you mean it is bloody warm. I mean I just go and get some get some cokes, but they ran out of um good uh, good Pepsi, so I had to get the uh the Coke cherry instead of the Pepsi cherry. Now triangles can never be replaced, Perry. You wait. I think that this is going to be right up your alley. Don't, don't you worry. Um, hey there, glorious sir. How you doing? How's things going? Um, right. So we need to have an array. Now remember, we don't really have any custom collections yet because we're just trying to get stuff done. So what we need to do is is just simply just hard code something silly because we just want to get stuff working and this is what it's all about at the beginning so we just hard code silly little arrays of 32 or something because it's good enough for now so we need an array well we need to basically say hey um right so this is an array of resource states, sync states. Uh, we need to also have an array of like, which resources need synchronizing. So it's U32 star, right, because it's an array. Um, so this is like, this is an array of resource indices, right? It could just be GPU resource ID really. Okay, so what we're saying is like, this is the array. So next command, sync resources, something like that. Um, and then we obviously have the U32 to say, hey, 
this is how, how big the array is, right? And we'll just, yeah. Again, I'm not really fussed about this being super safe for now because we'll have a, some our own custom collections that will make it safe. So all we're going to do is ggpu dot this thing, right? Um, count plus equal one. I'm on the Rubicon this week, and this stuff is so refreshing. Hmm. Have I seen this drink before? Wait a minute. I'm signed into Google. Let me sign out. Ah, uh, yes, these things. Yes, I think I remember you saying it last on the last time, and I've seen these in the supermarket. Hmm, awesome. Very sugary, I imagine. All of the sugar. Like, I think one of the most refreshing drinks is orange juice and lemonade, you know, nice and chilled. That drink, it's pretty good. So we're going to add this resource. Screw it. Um, oh, wait, no pointer. Sorry. I, I th I put the points there because there, usually I dynamically allocate stuff, but yeah, it's already, yeah, an array. Right, in okay, case so we add it to there, but really what we should do is we should do, do this, right? Only add it if it actually exists. If not exists, Right, and we're simply looking for if this guy dot raw exist equal true, and then people people in like other languages be like, I can just use it, do that with iterators, and be like, okay, <laughs> okay. Anyway. If this, this thing exists, then we, or if it doesn't exist, we add it in there. Nice. Um, cool. So this means we're building up. Well, no, no, we need to, we need to maybe merge them, right? Because what happens if you say, Hey, I, I read on this resource. And then the next time you say you write this resource, right? So what happens if you mentioned this when you dispatch this command here this dispatch command here um, imagine you say explicitly you use this command sync resource and you sync on this texture twice you sync with it with a read and with a write what should you do we well, should merge the two together and make it read, read write you know so that's what we need to write is a merge function for the accessor mode. So GPU access mode merge. I'm gonna merge A and B basically. A and uh, B. And then we need to actually put this in in the right place. Header file says up here. So how do we merge these two guys? These are our things. Well, we can just all the bits together. All right, because it's a bunch of bits, right? So we simply just sim yeah, we simply say return. You know why I didn't? Yeah, let's just make it a macro 
force in line. Oh yeah. So we just uh, delete all this. And then if it does exist, we'll do merge. So really what we actually need is some form of index, right, found index. And the found index would be a U32 max. And then we're just gonna say found index equal index and then just delete all that. And then if the found index is not equal to U32 max, we are going to index this guy with the found index. And then use that new lovely macro with A and B. Oh wait, sorry, that's not the one we do it on. It's the sync states. Wait, okay, let's think about that. Let's catch up with chat first. Um, Raju and Arnold Palmer. Who's, who's Arnold Palmer? Is that like a beer? Oh. I think, okay, so you think about this what Rubicon basically is juice plus lemonade to carbonate. Nice. Good drink. Hey there, Shara. Wait. Sharera, Sharera, I don't know. Hey, welcome. Your HTC does not have any sort of make or C make. How are you building your C projects? There's a scripts directory. Uh, there should be instructions on the on the repo, if I remember correctly. Um, it's pretty basic. We have a build script, like it says at the bottom, didn't it? No. Oh, there's documentation for developers, right? It's not abundantly clear. Developer. There you go. Scripts. Run the build script. Compiles everything. Yeah. Scripts directory has got it all in. Basically, custom build systems are the way. See, every C build system basically sucks that exists. There's nothing good. Hey there, Kappa. How you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, really hot. Um, I'm down on like th number three of his cherry coke here. Just try and keep cool. Not as bad as the other day though. Yeah, I don't think it's that one. That I need to access via the index actually. I just realized I need, I can't do that. What I need to do is I need to, there's the sync state. So there's a sync state for each resource and you just use the resource ID to access it. Um, and that thing stores the, this thing stores the access mode. Right. So what we're looking at doing is Maybe this should always be a merge. So every time you dispatch, you set the after to nothing, like a none. Access mode of none. I guess this can exist. So I think every, every time after we do a dispatch, oh, can't be. You, yeah, you've got to go over all of these guys, get their sync states, and then set the after, set the before to the after, and then the after to GPU access mode none. And then this means this can always be a merge. Right. 
right? I like this order. So I think that makes a lot more sense. So, all right. Okay, so this, if you need to actually sync, like this is basically saying, if we need to actually sync the next time a dispatch is called, like if you're just doing a couple of reads, like you're just reading, if, if you read from the resource before and you read for the resource after, you don't need to do this. Um, but we're still going to store the access mode in here. Yep. In the sync state. When you do a dispatch, Um, GPU resource ID or right. So when we do a dispatch, we go over all of these and we clear it, but we do that at the end, right? But before we need to say, hang on a minute, do we need to sync? And if we do, we're going to emit a resource barrier. Um, so this is where we can put a pipeline barrier in in Vulcan. So we get to learn a little bit about that and see what that is. It's very, it's very confusing when you try and read the Vulcan spec and see what this thing is. It just feels like rocket science, but it's actually very simple. Yeah, that's fine. No worries. I should probably make that a bit clearer, I guess. Yeah. Right. So. Mm. Okay. So do I want to put like command everything in here? Command sync resource commands dispatch. Maybe it makes sense. Right, so we're going to add a new backend function. It's one of Perry's favorite things. Um, so we need to go into GPU backend.h and we're going to add this thing. So should it be void? Probably not. So we sh if we pass in So we can pass in the array of Like it could just get the global it like it could just read the global data But it would be better if it's just passed in because then it's more apparent what this thing actually does so we want the array of uh, Resources right Then you also want the array of sync state for those, right? Resource sync states. And then you also want the number of resources. Now we're trying to actually sync on, okay? So we're gonna get down to the, into the GPU backend for the Vulcans. And where's dispatch? Oh, shoot. Good catch. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. That's copy paste error. Hence why copy paste is like the best and worst tool. Thank you so much. Right. Um, cool. So what we're looking at doing here is gonna, we're gonna use a new function. So we've got to add it to the, we've got to add it to our function. Oh no, we've already got pipeline barrier too. Awesome. 
because we got a manual sync already. Yes. Take all this code. We've done it before, but we've got a hard coded version. So the basic idea is, is we need to fill in these image memory barriers, right? Or buffer memory barriers. And all we're doing is saying, like all we're doing is emitting this pipeline barrier command. So remember we've got this diagram here, we've got a dispatch here, we've got a dispatch here. This dish dispatch writes to this resource and this one reads from this resource, meaning it is added to the array of resources that need synchronizing at this barrier. So all we're gonna be doing is, before we emit this dispatch here, all we're gonna be doing is emitting a barrier here and say, hey, by the way, above here, this resource was used in a compute shader for writing. And then afterwards, it's gonna be used as a, it's gonna be used in a compute shader for reading, right? Um, so that's all we're going to be doing essentially. So, and I just want to, I just want to like uh, underscore something here. The way we're doing synchronization by manually, by doing it immediately, immediately on the next dispatch that happens, isn't necessarily the best way to do it because the, the when you issue your dispatches, they could be in the wrong, the most, not in the most optimized order, and you'd have to manually reshuffle the dispatches around, and to put the barriers in the right place, depending on the way your frame is right. But so typically, a, a better solution is to graph this out and and then reorder it via the graph, then emit it into the into the command buffer. But we just want to do the most simplest thing, thing right now. And you can go a long way with this um, implementation. So we're just going to start simple first. Awesome. Thank you, Gorissa. Um, right. So let's uh, just get this in here. So we do need a temporary allocator to do this best. But we don't have one. So we're just going to roll with the simple. So we're going to have. Okay, so it's made super scary in Vulcan, but it's fine. We've illustrated how simple it is. Like they don't explain it that way in the doc. Well, they do explain it that way, but they explain it in very Vulcan terminology and it's very confusing. Um, so this is the memory barriers. Okay, image barriers, I'm just gonna call them. So we'll say like to do. Let's just say 32 for now. Um, and then we'll say buffer barriers. And then we need to put a VK, oh no, no we don't, don't worry. Uh, buffer barrier, stick a lovely to do up here and say to do, uh, custom memory allocator. So we want to use like a temp memory allocator here. Um, and max allocate for Uh, so we need to have a count as well. So we're going to go ahead and say buffer barriers count image barriers count. Right now it's going to do a for loop. Right, so we're just going to go over all the way to resources count. And then what we're gonna do is switch. Is it a switch? Do we need a switch? We pro, I think we need to get the internal resource. Hey, what are you doing? That one. We need to get the resource by using GP resource get. This is like an internal thing. We'll say res IDs 
index. Yep. And then we also get the sync state. So this holds the different access modes for before and after, right? Okay. So we just get a sync state for that. Um, so we can use that before and after knowledge to build the barrier, right? So we're just going to go ahead and take the address of index of that. Okay. Then what we're going to do is say, hey, um, if resource type equal equal GPU resource type buffer. I don't know why it doesn't have buffer there. How to meet my wife seems to have forgotten the the, the story. Um, we it was like my friend's. Uh, birthday and it was like very late in a like a pool well we, I'm not sure what you call it anymore like was it called like a is it like a pool club or like a is it basically like it's like a, a bar but you have like pool tables there and everything like that so I was playing pool and I was playing with someone who just wasn't really interested in playing like too busy looking around for girls and things, but not really like Yeah, it's just just really weird. Anyway. So basically he wasn't playing pool. I just wanted to play pool and have a good game. And uh he decided to Yeah, so I just said Okay, I'll just give give the table to someone else. So I found someone who was waiting by the table and I was like, Here you go, I'll give you I'll give you a table after this game, it's just not really concentrating. So then after we finally finished the game, because he's too busy looking around at every girl that walks by for some reason, um, he decide, um I go look over there, the guy isn't there, and then I see a lady there of the same nationality. Um, so um, yeah, I just go over and say the pool table's ready and then the conversation starts there and we, uh, we, we, you know, walk her home and then walk like an hour to walk home because I walked the wrong way. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we just speak from then, really. Yeah. It, it was, it's, it's purely random. I didn't, like, you know, I, I don't recommend, uh, yeah, I think, I think, like, I think it's, it's best when things just, just happen that way. Like, if, if you're trying very hard, for a particular person, I think it's uh, probably mo most times it's, it's, it's pretty bad. It's just better if if things just end up happening and, and you just both like each other, you know. Um, and may maybe that person that you really like or whatever doesn't like you initially and, you, and then, then it happens and that, that's fine. It's just when you try, if you try very hard for a particular person, to try and make it happen is probably the wrong route. Have you thought about your best mod yet, Perry? Hmm. Yeah, I've been keeping keeping your secret, sir. As you know. Maybe I mentioned you once or twice. I think so. Um so we want to allocate a buffer barrier. <clears throat> buffer barriers. Buffer barrier count. I'm famous. Time to go back. Hey, my salad. Awesome. Look at Perry keeping himself healthy. He's gonna live live long. Eating salad. And then we also have, you know, we won't fill out, we'll just copy paste it, you know. So here we go, go to buffer barrier. Fill out all of this. What is all this garbage? Typical Vulcan, tons of garbage. So let's, let's go over it. So, S type, we all know what S type is, right? It's basically just repeat whatever the name of the type is in this e enum. And they do this because they like to daisy chain. Uh, 
they like to daisy chain structures together for, uh, for extensions. Um, so every structure by default pretty much is has its own enum. Uh, the source stage mask. So this is basically, so this comes in two parts. <clears throat> so because we're doing, so source means before, after means destination uh, in re relation to this graph that we talked about earlier, right? Dispatch after, dispatch before. So what we're saying is, is before, it's using a compute shader. Now, there's tons of stuff here. If you're not doing compute shader only, you're gonna have to specifically mention the shader stages, like vertex shader, right, and stuff like this. Um, if you transfer something from the host or tr transfer it to the host, you need to use the host bit, right? So there's stuff, that is stuff that's different. Um, there's transfer if you copy in it, um, data, you know, it's more of like, so it, it, it's stage is kind of like, what kind of things is this thing used in? Like what type of operations is this thing used in? That's what it is. Um, then the act, the access mask is basically the, the whole read write thing, right? So it's, but there's tons of different ones. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, we have to make a function for this. Um, yeah, we'll make a function for this. So we'll get back a VK as access mask flags two because there's, there's two because there's two different versions of this synchronization stuff. We're using this thing called synchronization two, which basically gives you more flags and it's more specific. So it's better if you can give the driver more information. Um, access flag from access mode. Because maybe there's different ways of doing it. Mm, probably never actually. Let's just do that for now. Access mode mode and uh, let's let's get in there hey there day how you doing good good afternoon i think it's evening now here how are you doing what's the point of underscore khr stuff so that just means it's a chronos extension and what chronos extension means that it's basically supported by multiple vendors. No, sorry. Kronos extension means it's it's made by Kronos and it's probably supported by basically everything, I think, typically. EXT means it's supported by multi multiple vendors and obviously AMD or NVIDIA I don't know, I forgot how it is in VD. I, I forgot. Um, those ones obviously mean it's specifically for those cards. Um, and if it doesn't have an extension, then it's built into the standard thing. So basically the swap chain, which is how you do graphics and display, sorry, how you display the graphics to the screen is a KHR extension, even though it's supported basically by everything because it's, it's not supported by a computer. And for some reason, this is the way they've decided to expose that as well. A bit weird. Um, right, so if, so if read write, you know what, it's flags, isn't it? Flags, if mode and GPU access mode read, we need to or on a read. No worries, no worries. Oh, NV, there we go. Uh, hey, no, not so red, not doing bad. Doing pretty good, thank you. Doing pretty good. How's things going with you? Should be finishing up on the synchronization stuff pretty quick, so super happy. Yeah, so it used to be a Kronos extension because they basically implemented, when Synchronization 2 came out, they implemented it as an extension. And 
that extension had 100% device support because they basically made a translation layer to say if it's not supported on this hardware we're going to emulate the old version um, and it just won't be as optimized as it could be if the driver supported it properly and that's basically I think that's the reason why they did that um, Right, put the right bit on. So I think this is this is probably it. I don't know. Let's have a, have a look. Have a look at all the different options. Oh, access. Right, so shader read, shader write. The documentation on the website is probably better, but I don't think you need a memory meet, read and memory write. So I think what those are is that's a general thing, and it automatically includes a lot of the other ones, I think. Uh, I don't think we need to say anything else. Ooh. Maybe these actually. Take a look at that. Right, I need the docs. This ain't easy. Um, so this one is saying it's an OR, a logical OR of uniform read. Shader sampled read, storage read, bit, and this. So this one is the scrubby way of doing it. Right, there's a better way. If you know the actual information, then you can do a better job apparently. So sampled is basically never unless it is a texture. So yeah. We basically just want to be able to say, oh, binding table read. What is binding table read? Shader binding table in any shade. Oh, that's a ray tracing thing. Okay, so all we need then, ray tracing is another one of those crazy APIs. It's ridiculous. Right, so I think we'll add a boolean to say, hey, um, we'll say, yeah, can we do uh, sampled, right? So we'll. So if it's a texture, if it's a texture, yeah, I think we'll just say it's texture. Yep. So it is. So if it's a texture, we'll do sampled. And then if not, it's just always this read one, I think, if this. So I think it's the same for the write version as well. Right, write bit. Shader write bit is equivalent to storage write bit. Okay, okay. So. Right, there's nothing else for it. So we'll just say if it is a texture, we'll or an extra bit on there, which is going to be sampled. Hey there, tired beaver. How you doing? Are you extremely tired today with all the heat? All right. So there's our access flags. So we can now go to resource barrier. Uh, so now in this destination access mask, we can now simply just throw in our um, resource. No, 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 no. We've already got it in a local, haven't we? Sync state before access mode, right? Because remember, source is before, destination is after. And we're simply just throwing those in there. So here's the destination one. So that's the after lot, right? There's an extra boolean in here, we're going to put false, done. 
Um, we could have put the type of the resource in there and just did, did it differently, but that's, that's fine. Um, right. So we're going to put zero and zero in here. Wait, 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 wait. There's a special flag. Oh, I hate this. Key family ignored. That's the special flag. Because we're using concurrent, meaning you don't have to do the queue transitions. Like if you did, if you created the resource with an exclusive sharing mode, you'd here is where you'd have to do the transitions, take it from one queue and put it on the other. But we don't care about that. Now we put the buffer in there. So we also need to get the backend data as well. Always see compile. I always tidy. Interesting. C compiler is a pain. Yup. The C language, as simple as it may seem, it has some bits to it where you like, come on, is that really how it works? But you know, it's still much more simple than other languages. It's just, even with C, there are some bits where you know, there are some complications to some areas of it. That is true. Zig is simpler. You think? Is Zig more simple? It's got it's got com it's got a compile time element to it. You think it's more simple? It also depends on LLVM, so it can actually pull off that that compile time stuff. You think that's more simple? Like, I think the most complicated thing that was a big ball like in C was this curly brace initializer syntax. It is, it is like, it it automatically steps through. Like I've done so much testing on this, and I'm pretty sure I got it right. But if there's a substructure in here, if any of these elements is a substructure, and you don't put like a dot, you know, and specifically initialize it right um, if you just put like zero in there and the first field is a structure it's going to nest down into that structure and set the first scalar field and then like you can keep setting the fields within the first field and then you finally get out of the field and then you like it's so crazy how you can basically just initialize a structure that's filled with other substructures with just purely scalars it's so silly like, and you have to implement, imp implement that in the compiler. Um. Did I not update the header file? There we go. Right, what is the size of this buffer? We're gonna say VK whole size. Because you could do a sub-region of it and say, hey, this shader is only accessing the sub-portion. But from, mm, That is extremely difficult to figure out. It's possible, but it requires a lot of like, information or manual information you put in and you could get it wrong so now from what i understand is it's not such a bad thing if you do that but may, you know maybe it is don't don't quote me it seems like a lot of work to get that information though and i don't think they have that for the image barrier right so This is interesting, right? Image barrier, image, VK image, please. Um, oh no, there's a sub resource at least, but it's not specifically saying like, like a sub uh, offset into the text or anything. It specifically says you need to do, oh, there's old layout, new layout. Mm -mm -mm. Right, let's get this up. Right, let's get all these things visible so we can uh, 
see if we've got everything correct. So we've got the source as aspect mask, destination mask, key family crap, right? Really these are before, so I kind of want to, I like being neat. So what is the layout before and what is the layout afterwards? So if we're doing, we're doing this, um, yeah, so I think it's, okay. So what is image layout? Image layout basically specif like tells the driver that like, how is this image being used so it can maybe lay out the image so it's more optimal for this um, or maybe do something to the image or whatever so it is it's better to to sort of like access it for this specific task so basically because again we've simplified it using compute shaders only a lot of this just goes away obviously there's still transfer and things like this where is transfer gone that we will end up doing but that is is a specialized system which will be the upload buffer in future which we'll hopefully get to today um but obviously color attachment and depth stencil stuff that's all traditional rasterizing rasterizer pipeline so we could just leave it in general right we could just leave it in general but we're putting a barrier in anyway because of the read write synchronization stuff so we might as well do the transition so for that we need to go from read only so it's read only optimal and general which so like we with general it's a very special one that i think it can be used in most places and you don't have to worry about doing this transition um but general also is the one that you use when you want to write to it from a shader so Where's the shader re shader read only optimal? That's the better one. So what we want to do is if it has the right bit set, uh, GPU access mode is writable. If it's writable, what we want is the general one see as much as I would like to do it like that it's it, it's just better Better video like this. So if it has a right bit return VK image layout uh, general, then if not, re a shader read only. I still have a bad experience with programming in Zig compared to C. That is just me. What is the expected time frame to make a working C compiler? I don't know. People like to say people like to say it's easy, you can do it in a month, but it if you really want to support C properly, it does take longer. Like it took me to write a shader compiler and do it all properly, but also I did go on a bit of a detour initially and not do C itself. Um, it took me a year and three months to get to the level of polish that I'm at with doing a few detours. And, and that was doing it as a side project while working full time. Um, so be yeah, people like to talk and say it's easy. You can do it in like a month, but not many people have actually written a C compiler, you know? So, uh, but you can do a very minimal one in probably in a month, in a month's worth of full-time work. Um, 
but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be anything to you know call home about you know mom i wrote a compiler that's great honey Uh, the old layout, old meaning source, meaning before. It's like, well done, inconsistencies again. But it's okay. Actually, to be fair, they're very rare that there are inconsistencies. Um, but anyway, before, access mode, after access mode. Okay, so image, then a sub resource range. So this one will be aspect mask, which will only be color. Color bit, like we don't use depth or anything like that because again, that's traditional right? pipeline stuff. Um, then we need layer count zero. Wait a minute, sorry, base layer. That's what I meant. Base array layer zero. Or right, sort this out. Copy paste. Copy paste. Mip. Base MIP, MIP, no, 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 level count. Very terrible. Okay, so base is zero. We don't have any views or anything like this. So we just need, just need to look up resource texture dot MIP levels and then resource texture dot array layers. Cool. So that looks good to me. So what we've gone and done now is we've made two arrays where we've got all our barriers sorted out um, from all the resources that we've said we're gonna sync. We, all the resources that we said we're gonna use for the next dispatch and previously they were in the wrong state. Previously they were written to and now they've been read or something like this. Um, and so let's just quickly do a double check. Yep. Yeah. yeah, okay, well, that's good. So now we've got two arrays of things. We can now fill in the pipeline barrier command. So because it's pipeline barrier two, we use this dependency info object. Uh, memory barriers are null, but we will use um, array, array, sorry, buffer barriers count. And then we say buffer barriers. And then this one is image barriers count. And then this one is image barriers. And then we finally fire off on the current command buffer. So we need to get that current there we go. So we get the current active frame, and then we get the command buffer for this active frame that we're recording into, throw the pipeline barrier in there, and boom. So what we should be able to do now, so these are the two commands we've filled in today. Well, no, sorry, this command we filled in today with the sync resource. If it needs synchronizing, we add it to the array of next resources to sync, and then we you know we up the count and everything like this. So we actually, if we actually have resources to sync, this is the last parameter, right? This is the first parameter, and the second one is the states. What is the state of these resources? What are they in? Have they, are they currently being read from and being written to? That sort of thing. We do the dispatch. Then at the end, we go over all of the um, we go over all the resources and we move the before state to be what the after one is and then we clear the after to none and it will it will accumulate that as we go so this one is saying like if the resource So I think we've got a bit of a problem where if the, oh no, I think this should be fine. Yeah, the resource being read from, then you do write no overlap, 
it will be in read only optimal layout. We could just leave it in general. That'll solve the problem. Now it'd be fine. It's any right, I can always change it. If the resource has has been written to in the previous dispatch or current dispatch. Um, yeah, so this no overlap, I think there's a bit of a bug with it. these boolean um, is writable then boolean previous is writable or is previous writable or was previously writable something like that um, so I think we want to do is basically all these guys, right? Is writable or with, right? And then what we want to do is say, um, And hmm. So if they're if they're both writable. Hmm. Hey there, Ansel. How you doing? Good to see you. How'd you like that Marcus chair? Um, is this what it's called? Yeah, it's pretty decent because I'm quite tall, so. It uh, gives me support all the way up, so it's it's good, it's good chair. Hello, Gloria, sir. How you doing? It's getting quite dark in here, isn't it? Hey there, buffer overflow. Good to see. You. Doing doing good. Um, yeah. Hopefully, you're gonna get some synchronization code in today, pretty quick, and start some upload buffer stuff. Um, yeah, things are going pretty decent. It's it's a bit warm, but. Yeah. Quite tall, six foot five, yep. Yeah. That's right. I'm working on a, a UI slash window thingy. Nice. What sort of UI is it? Media mode or the retained modes? Ah. Xlib is kind of easier than XCB, is it really? <laughs> I remember trying XCB before, but then I couldn't do something in it. And I had to implement it in user space and it was like a thousand, well, sorry, around 600 lines of code. So I, I just went back to Xlib. Um, right, so we're trying to say that if, you, if you're trying to, if you got this is no overlap thing on, they have to be the same. uh for you to not do it right so so if any of them is writable so if they're both writable you want to put this in but then we also want to say and so if they're both the same thing
Um, so this needs to this needs to stop it. So we end it there because it's probably easier. So if that. Hmm. This is bloody confusing. Maybe it's better if we just move it in. So what we're trying to say, if they come in here and if they are both the same thing, Because it's just booleans, we can add them together, right? In that case. So if they're both the same thing. And this one is non-overlap. This one is no overlap. You want to knot that whole expression, and then this is okay. Okay, finally, that, that makes sense. So, if the resource has been written to in the previous dispatch or the current dispatch, and they are both not writable. Um, they're both not writable and no uh, overlap. Yeah, it's very easy to say. Ah, screw it. Mm. We're trying to say like, and if, like we used to explain this in English a bit better or in a different way, you would say if the, and one of them is readable, or no overlap has not been specified, something like that. So let's just read that over, see if it makes any sense. If the resource has been written to in the previous dispatch or the current dispatch, that's this one. And if one of them And if one of them is readable, or no overlap has not been specified, yep, that's right. Um, we then add it to the list of resources to sync when the next dispatch Command is issued. Bam. Before, right before. Damn. Pretty good. Pretty good. So that should that should be it. Just gotta get it compiling now make a new shader and then we'll fire it up and see if we get any any problems and then we're going to disable it and then see see the problems right so let's see how this goes uh create a screenshot using xcb cool
Um, do you dump the frame buffer when you write to an image file? Oh, sorry. Uh, one good thing is that XCB has type names that make sense. Yeah, Xlib ones are really crazy. Like they take the name window, they take the name display, they take the name ball, um, capital letter true, capital letter false. Um, yeah, they do so many weird ones. Like it's just insane. It's robbery. All right, all compiles. So. Uh, let's see if it blows up the computer. All right, the computer is still on, the stream is still going. Um, that is good, good thing. So we're only firing one, one shader. So what we're going to do is make a new shader. Now we're going to render our first entity, people. Uh, now I think that's just maybe a, a way of marketing <laughs> what we're about to do a bit more. But we're going to make our own, our own. Let's render. GFX CS guy, right? Renders guy. So guy is going to be an eight by eight cube. Sorry, square. Very exciting. Triangle. You want a triangle, Perry? All right, I'll get I'll get you a triangle, Perry. He's going to be an eight by eight triangle, eight by pixel triangle. Give me. An, I want one of these. No, no, no. Where is where is IQ? Where is the man? Where is the man? Right, here's IQ. What what shape, John Perry? You you want a triangle? There we go. Equal actual triangle. Got you covered, Perry. So, guys, gonna be a triangle. So this is obviously due to cell code, we've got to translate it. No biggie. Got to make Perry happy. Otherwise he'll, he'll, he'll uh, come and help my family. I'm joking. Uh, SDF triangle. Um, so F32 times 2, P, float R. Have we got F32? We've got F32. Um, radius, wait, P, I guess R means radius. So let's see how this uses all this stuff. Um, just gotta give it a refactor so it works with what we're trying to do. These are scalars, right? Scalar, what's K? Scalar. Get rid of that const. P, P dot X, K, yeah. We don't support doubles. Well, we do, but it's an extension. F32 times 2. PK. They're all scalars. Divide by 2. So that is a... F3... Mm, wait a minute. Div... Div G. Love a good... Wait. Div SG for scalars, a second arg. Cool. Um... Clamp G and the the spacing for these things is so like oh not a fan of it but anyway it will do length is it length G or len G I'm not sure I think it's len G um, multiple oh, what is this so this gives you a scalar back sign we better have a sign. We have a sign, people, in our maths library. Look at that. Love a good sign. Um, sweet. So that's the SDF. So the SDF, we can render a triangle. So we'll start off with a box, then we'll make it a triangle. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Got to be using F32s everywhere like champs, don't we? Thank you. So we're going to render an 8x8, and then we'll make it better. So we'll make a new thing, we'll call it guy. Um, 
Yeah, so rendering guy. Oh, guy shader. So there'll be a U38. Mm, should we do a float? I think we just do a pixel position. So pause, right, and then you have your um, output texture. There's the position. Um, I might have to change it into floats anyway, but that'll do. Make sure it's in bounds and then render it. Yeah, so there's our guy BC. So standard sort of thing, if you go out of bounds. Um, wait, why is there a position? Because we're doing... Right, so position plus... So if your dispatch index is 8 by 8, you kind of want to do like a... So a coordinate on the screen would be BC position, which would probably be a centered position, right? Plus some form of like half size. So you could take this as the half size. So that'd be a U32 times two. Um, and then we just want to do like a, uh, an add, add two vectors together, please. Then this chord, if that goes outside the dimensions, boom, awesome. Then we'll render, so render just a flat color for now, and then we'll make it into something. So, red, just make it red, right? Okay, so now we've got a guy shader. And, uh, now go ahead and actually use guy. So, in our, Right, so we're going to explicitly sync right for on our surface resource. Um, okay, and then we'll and then we'll do a dispatch. So then that will put a, maybe put a pipeline barrier in there, and then we put another sync down to say we're going to write to the surface, and then we put another. And then we dispatch, and then it puts another barrier barrier down. So replace clear with um, guy because it's our guy shader. Then we need to say clear guy. Nice one. There's a clear guy, everybody. Then the position. We're just gonna put him, so it's 800 by 400. Sorry, 800 by 600 is the display. So size, it's just fixed. So let's do half of that, give it a go. Uh, it doesn't compile apparently because the enum doesn't exist, but that's metadata and we haven't actually compiled the shaders. So we press F5. Um, we've got a problem, it jumps to here. F32 is not declared. Because we haven't got our core types in here, And that's interesting. I would like to get that working. So it's as if we want these. In the shaders as well, but you don't want obviously to include all of this in here. So maybe we have a core shared header and what that means is shared just means it's usable across the CPU and GPU. So I don't know, where did the music stop? Bring the jams back. So yeah, may maybe we, to get these working, I don't like to create more files, but it's got to happen. Core, shared, 
pragma once. Include core shared. So I need to take that. So again, we want to remove the standard library stuff eventually, but for now we're just getting stuff up and running. When we have initial graphics sorted out and everything we need, I think I'll do a cleanup pass and we'll do some more maintenance things, right? So we've got this core shared now, meaning that really in this, wait, where is it? In this one here, Right, let's try that. What? Did we add that dash on the build script? Wait a minute, it's in compile options, isn't it? Wait a minute. It is in the build script because that's... Oh, I see now. Right. So for HCC specifically, we need a dash include directory for source. Scripts, build bat. So our custom C compiler can pick up on that directory. Right, and we don't have F32 in there. So we need to add that type def. Double F64. Now I've got the nice, um, the nice functions, there you go. Yeah, thank you, Russell. Appreciate it. All right. So now we've got the, everything's compiling. So now let's see if it works. All right, black screen. Then we've got a Vulkan validation error. It prints it out and it also prints it out to a file as well, I believe. So it's a null handle for our buffer. So why is it a null handle? Because what we're using is, is the surface resource and what we're not doing is we're not actually populating this thing with anything. So what we need to do is when we initialize the back end and create the swap chain, mm. well, Resource get res ID, what's that do? Oh no, sorry, wrong one. I'm looking at the wrong function. Where's the initialize? Down here. Right, so this sets up the resource. Okay, so we need to get um, surface resource equal. So we'll need to like do this properly. But for now, we'll just roll with this resources pool one we're going to set up manually surface resource type equal gp resource type texture 2d um, then we need to say that is going to be equal to surface resource 
or like surface maybe. Okay. Um, the the back end data will be sorted out in the back end. Don't worry. Um, then texture dot format. Is there is there a surface format? No, it's hard coded, isn't it? Okay. Is it sRGB? Yes, it's sRGB, isn't it? No, 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 no. That one. Why is it you normal? It should be sRGB. It might look different now that we've done this. Um, so... Yeah, good old, you, you know when Snorm, you know, Snorm, good old pal Snorm. Miss that man. Uh, array layers, one. MIPS, one. MIPS, one. DIMS, again, it's hard coded. Sort out layer. 800 by 600, that's what we're dealing with for now. We can just search for that, makes it easy. Um, plus there's to do's every time we use that anyway. Um, it's actually a times by three, then the last dimension is one. Cool. Then in the back end, we need to do a similar thing where we need to actually, and friends, right? There we go. We need to get the surface resource and initialize the back end bits. Um, back end VK back end VK resource back end, pass in the surface resource pointer, get back. So we need to set up the image the image. Right, so every single time you ask for a new Every single time you ask for a new, acquire a new image and it's successful, to do get the surface correctly. So this is like at the start of the frame when we're about to record something, we acquire the next swap chain image, we get the index for it. What we need to do is we need to set up this back end thing and poke in the image, which will be in ggpu vk dot images ggpu vk dot vk swap chain image index because this function here updates it, right? Then we get the view image here, poke it in there. So now we've poked it any single time we try and use it from now on, it will uh, have the right thing. Um, so, right, let's press the F5s and see what happens. Compiles. Now this next one is saying, oh. So the image format of sRGB with tiling optimal does not support the Usage that includes storage. Interesting. Right, so we'll go back to UNORM then. So it only, like, it only supports sRGB users as a render target, like can use the traditional pipeline. That is weird. Hmm. 
think about that. So let's remove the sRGB thing. F5. Bring back our friend Enorm. Um, right. Now this one is saying that the buffer is null handle, but when do we have a buffer? Oh, we didn't, do not set the type. What do we return? Rule one. Oh, that needs to be zero then. Crap. Right, it's changed now, this is good. Awesome, so now we've got some sync problem. So the validation error is saying the old one is read only optimal. Um, and then that is trying to say Right, classic rocket science. I'm just going to open up the blind, it's a bit dark. And now the sun isn't glaring, so hopefully it's not destroying the green screen. Mm. Oh well, that's good enough. So, what this one is trying to say is the old layout is read only optimal and then it says a bunch of like basically speaking like a lawyer um if the must be created with Right, so it wasn't created with the right usage flags. That's what it was saying. That's what it's basically saying. Um, so it needs to have the sampled bit. So that this is a swap chain image, meaning the X11 or Win32 creates the image for us. So when we get it to do that um, in the create swap chain bit, we need to give it a usage. Now it's saying sampled. So why is it being read only? This is really weird. Um Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go into that sync code. We're going to put in a sync, uh, sorry, core breakpoint, and then we open that up in GDB. Love make a breakpoint. Uh, here we go. So hit the breakpoint. Ta da. Um, so we need to say, hey, how many resources have we got? Should we have one? P resources cannot be. Level 10 dyslexia. Come on. One. So we get our resource, which should be surface. Excellent. So we've got the surface type one. There we go. Energy by 600. All the lovelies. So um, right, we're going here. So we're going to get to this image layout bit. What is the bef Oh, so it's the before. So is the, is the before read only? So I think what we want to do is we want to set the sync to set it up as, um, I see what it's doing. So it's got nothing. 
Ah, we need an extra if statement. We need to say else if. Uh, else if it's set as read, we'll do this one. And then if it's not that one, it's not either of these, meaning it's got nothing set yet, it's undefined. That's what we want. Right, now we've got segfault, and we've got a beautiful stack trace with our segfault handler. Which is super handy. So it's saying in OS Linux, no, sorry, it's saying in Dispatch uh, 137. So let's go and take a look. Uh, what we have is this act. Right. Oh, I did count instead of index again. Copy paste, best and worst feature of programming. And there we go. So now we've got our second render. Oh, and okay, and it crashed. Are we are we not clearing something? The S type must be memory barrier two. What? Thank you for the follows, guys. Hello there. Hey there, Pissmice. How you doing? Do you find debugging a lot easier? Or that a lot easier than an IDE? Um, I don't know. When you say an IDE, it makes it seem like all IDEs have good debuggers. I'm not sure if they do. Um, I think the Visual Studio debugger is typically is better. Um, but with GDB, I think if you were to master all of the command arguments, you could probably, it probably has all of the features that Visual Studio does pretty much that most people would use. But I think it's just so hidden away behind a specific terminal like command, it's a lot harder to actually use. VS Code, IntelliJ, yeah, I've not used VS Code one. I've used IntelliJ for Java. But yeah. Um, but yeah, typically you can get away with, like, it's okay with what I do. Like, I've not really bumped into some really big issue before doing it this way and not be solvable, so it's good enough. Um, so we should be setting the structure type. Um, we set this right every damn time. Oh, uninitialized memory. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho, Capture that one, please. Right. Maybe not. Right, I just don't think I didn't compile it. It must be. Okay, then we're good. So, let's try again one more time just in case. So, now we have our thing being rendered, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make Perry happy. It's gotta be a triangle. My Perry wants triangle. Now for some reason it's rendering the whole damn screen. So firstly, should I remove the synchronization code and see if it, it works, right? See if it doesn't work. I got a crash. We can't remove the sync code, damn it. Maybe we should be able to. Anyway, we only want to dispatch one group. Make it a nice little, little guy in the middle of the screen. Why isn't half this stuff compiling? 
Or saying it's compiled, at least. Right, so this guy is only an 8x8, eight eight, right? He should be bigger, though. Guy should be bigger, shouldn't he? So maybe we should make Guy... Let's make him take... Let's make, let's make him four times the size. So if it's four times the size, we need to remove... Like, to center him properly, we need to remove... 16. On the X and Y there, on the position. Is that centered? Oh, I don't even know. Wait, was that too much? Wait, yeah, no, 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 it should be fine. Right, it doesn't really matter so much. There's guy, but he's not a triangle. So Perry wanted him to be a triangle. So we can use sign distance fields here. Um, there's a simple function we sort of stole from IQ's blog. He's the SDF guy, if people don't know him. Um, so what we basically want to do is so P has got to be in a normalized space from 0 to 1 or something like this, I think. No, P is the center. P is the center of... It's relative from the center of the... Relative from the center of the rectangle. Right. So... If... POS is the position... And yes, yeah, so you got coordinate. So you first of all you turn coordinate into a mm. Yeah, uh So we basically want like a difference, right? And maybe it could be side. You know what? Let's turn them, turn, turn them into floats. So we've we've essentially got like the current chord we'll call C. Because oh, I'm being lazy. We'll turn that into... Uh, I think I can turn it like this. So what splat2 does is it basically just says chord x, chord dot x, comma, chord dot y. It's just a simple macro. It's really dumb. Like that. Right? And then this one is basically going to take an X and Y argument. So we'll do the conversion, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, and then we'll just do P for position. Um, then we're just going to say we'll get the difference, which will be P sub G going towards the coordinate from the position because it's got to be relative from the position, right? And then you probably want to. So you got the half size, so you probably want to divide it by the half size to make it. From, wait. Yes, yeah, so this gets you a point relative from the center position of or relative from P. So if that point goes outside the radius and the radius is half size. So, wait, that's not right. That's not half size. Wait, what, wait, what is that? Sorry, that's. Sorry, this is your, um... This is your offset. No wonder why it looked slightly off. Yeah, this is your offset. So we can maybe just use that. So you... If we're launching like four by four by four, sorry, four by four, so, so we probably wanted to say take 16, right? Sixteen, sixteen.
Should make our guys sphere. Well, we're sticking to 2D just for now. But yeah, we'll do the 3D later. Hey there, Captain Chica. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. Um, so that's actually an offset instead, and that will get us the coordinate right. So the offset is technically that, if you just convert that into a, like that is the offset position, right? So we could theoretically just say if triangle, then we say f32 times 2 splat to offset, right? Then this last one has got to be the actual radius of that triangle. So the radius of the triangle is, in a way, is that what it says radius? Yeah. So it's an equilateral triangle of radius. So if it's four times eight, which gives you 32, so being a radius is half that, so it's 16, right? So we should just be able to say 16. And negative means you're on the inside. So if you're on the outside, it'll be positive distance. And then we simply return. So that should now give us a color of red. Triangle. That's not fully right, is it? It's the right hand. It's not exactly what we wanted. Not exactly what we wanted for some reason, because we are doing maybe a oh subtract, and then it puts it into the insanely positive because this needs to be a signed version instead. So really, really, what you're trying to do, say. S32 times 2 dot x takes 16 and then the y takes 16 because so it wasn't rendering the other side hmm So it's like, it's as if you need to make this one a signed one now, right? PC pause. Um, how do we, how do we do that? I guess S32 times two splat two. I need to make a way to sort of maybe shorthand that and cast it. Now the output dims aren't signed. Uh. This ain't the same fun. We didn't close it properly, okay. No, oh. <laughs> oh no, now I want to. Damn it, these signed things. Wait, why does this have to be signed? Give me a sec. This one. Yeah, maybe we need to think about that sort of thing when we write more shaders, because kind of going from signed to unsigned, but I guess we won't be doing it much because it will be floats most of the time anyway, you know? Maybe it would have been better if I just made a float. We found a bug. Perry, what are you doing? Hey, Silvercore, how are you doing? Rear my game engine for production. Nice, sounds cool. Is this a personal game you're doing or are you working for another company? Hey, Silver Core, kind of sort of a land trip.
Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, um... My, uh... My, my, my wife's, um... My, uh, like... When my wife's mum went on holiday, like, a month or two ago, she brought this back for me. It's really nice. I love it. Um... Can't you just do dispatch cord take half screen res radius I could probably do that yes but I guess I've done it with a position instead that's true personal project but it's not the first engine to write mostly some science related engines cool yeah, it's from Kenya. Yeah, my wife's um, mum's from Zimbabwe, but she's from Kenya. From on the holidays. I right, found a damn bug. Um, That's not good. Mm. Different bit widths, but it's better to have different bit widths from result type you convert. Hmm. That's not good. Damn it, Perry. Look what you're making me do. But I don't know if I want to hop in and fix that compiler bug. It's, it's a weird one. So we convert it to a float anyway. I wonder if I can do an explicit conversion. Because that's all it's doing, right? Oh, towards, I was wrong. Right, so if I do an explicit conversion, doesn't like either. So I guess, so, so weird. Yeah, see I could probably go and fix that. It's in the spear V backend. Let's see if we get a new compiler up and running. Source, wait, 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 wait. Vim, source, spivy gen. Right where we do that, you convert. So it's doing some conversion when we do a convert. So you convert when you expect to do a so you're going to a uint from an s int. So it should be one of these converts or bit cast. But are we sure it's that specific line? Is it this line specifically? Like let, let's just set this to like uint like zero one. Does it compile? No, it doesn't. So it's this line here then. When it converts from a... When it converts from a... So is it this one? Um, S32 times 2, 0, So is it this line here? Which line is it then? Like, 
So if I comment, if I set that to zero one, then I set this to zero one, then I set this to that compiles. Bring that back. Okay, it's the first line. So, all right, what it what is it actually trying to do? So this is an unsigned, this is a signed and an unsigned. And then it should, so signed, then unsigned, it will be an unsigned, do the conversion, and then convert to signed afterwards. So, let's look at our uint. Uint to uint, it'll be uint convert. be a bit cast right so I think the sizes so we've got a bit of a problem where the sizes are the same or something like this I think I've got a oh, what you have to head out just so for okay it's cool silver core good to see you have a good rest of your evening thank you for popping by um so I think the issue is actually in the abstract machine language. When we generate, when we generate the convert, which gets lowered in in SpearVGen here. So we gen so we generate this convert, and when we generate it, so we generate it when there's a cast of some kind, right? be explicit or implicit um, you'll get a convert regardless so I guess what's happening is is there's a cast that's happening that probably shouldn't be happening like maybe maybe let's look at the tree so we can look at the tree by simply going to the scripts. Um, oh, damn it, I can't copy paste it from Vim because my terminal's crap. Right, third party, HCC, HCC, um, dash O, dash FI, or in source. GFX, GFX shaders C, dash FO for output, build shaders spear V, dash FMOC for output metadata in C. Uh, we're gonna output shader metadata. Then enable unordered swizzling. So my official will, will actually remember this. So we can always just reuse it later. And we have to type this out once. Cool. So now we can say dash dash debug AST. Get all this lovely. So in here at the end, here it is. GFX guy. So on the first expression, we do all of this. Right, to calculate offset. Okay, so offset equals Okay, so there's an signed int cast, okay, from a subtract. So let's, so first of all, there's a field access, it's unsigned int. This integer is then casted to a unsigned int, even though it was an int, and then it's a const, done at constant time, uh, compile time, so it turns into an unsigned int constant, very nice. Does the subtract, then it does a cast, into this signed in here. So that should be fine. But it creates a problem when it does the convert. Hey there, Provod, how you doing? How's things going? Welcome to the stream. Working on a C2, no, 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 we're not. Working on a game with an engine now. Um, we're just fixing a bug in our custom C compiler to do with integer conversions. But yeah, we're just 
we've just got our basic um, GPU compute only um, abstraction. Right now we've just got the sync code in. We just uh, ran a test shader. How's things going? How did the stream go? Um, so, if we follow the, so this is the syntax tree, what we've realized is it's kind of what we expect. So if we've got a cast in here to cast it from one source data type to another, it will implement the convert, meaning in here when it loads it down to spear V, the destination will be Yeah, but why is it landing on uConvert? I don't get it. Oh, destination is... Destination is signed in. Source is uin. And there's a uConvert here. Interesting. If the unsigned destination type is not equal to the source destination type. Is it a type def? No, it can't be a type def as the causing us the problem. Hey Provod, I spent nearly three hours looking for a C string corrupting memory. Off one error in texture, oh no. Oh, yeah, it's a pain sometimes to track down, especially when you wrote the code like a long time ago. Perry, want a triangle, and this is what we're having trouble. Exactly, exactly, Perry. This is all Perry's fault, everyone. The reason why we're debugging HCC right now is Perry. That 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 man. So we've got this in here. So the source type it, it will be a type this will be type def to a uint thirty two T, meaning of course they might be different. So I reckon I reckon what the problem is. No 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 no. Yes. Yeah, but there's a it's a uint. Wait, it's got a const there. Can you see that const? It's checking for pure equality. We should get rid of the const and not Pure bugger this one. Remove the qualifiers when you check for equality, please. Right, I, I cannot test this. Um, well, I can. I can just drag the executable over, can't I? So, build, there's the exe, chuck it into game of that engine, third party. Overwrite, please. Right now, we give it a run. No, 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 I don't want no debugging. Damn it. And not, yeah, that should remove the qualifier. Oh, shoot. It didn't actually compile, maybe. Um, build that one, that one. Overwrite. 
Come on. So we're going to get the two different types here and print them out now. <laughs> Damn it, Perry. Uh, So let's undo that for a sec. So, because I put it in the wrong place. That's why. I put it in the uint from sint rather than the sint from uint place. Yep. Oh, ho, 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 we fixed it. Right. This is good. Now, Perry should have his triangle. Can you see it, Perry? Should we make the triangle bigger? So, we made a triangle using compute. It was basically using sign distance fields. Kind of cheating, but we got it. Perry got his triangle. Let's up it by four times. Let's just change the shape. So we've just upped some numbers in the shader. We're just gonna roll over to here. We're gonna up the number of dispatches. Oh no. Wait, that didn't compile, did it? Duh. Eight by eight. Wait, do we do half of it? Oh yeah, we only doubled it, didn't we? Don't mind me. Did you look at that, Perry? You got yourself a triangle. Do you like it? It's upside down. We ain't fixing that. <laughs> uh, fine, Perry. More compiler bugs. Uh, so unhandled conversion for SpearV from AML. Op 29 with type class 2. 5900. Sorry, 590. What does it even say? So. There's a negate on a. Oh, and a gate on a uint. Have we not got a unigate? No, uh, there won't be a unigate while they're in spear V. Um, spear V spec. There's only S negate, isn't there? Right, can S negate work on a unsigned type? Yes, it can, excellent. So we're simply just missing that. So if we just compile that, drop that in there. I think that copied, no, maybe it canceled, I don't even know. And then we should be able to run that. Wait. Compile it, that's what I mean. It compiles. And it runs. But it didn't even flip it. Right, because it's... I have no idea why I didn't flip that.
Hey, what are you doing? Oh, uh, maybe... Hmm... Don't know why it's not flipping, to be honest. A blimpo. Maybe because it's never negative. No, but then it would still flip. I don't know. No tip. I don't know. Yeah. It's because the parry doesn't have the tip. The parry doesn't like the tip. Hey, I'm Kip Payne. Um, it's got four sides, though. It has, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know why it's missing the pointy pointy. It's being clipped out for some reason. It's being rendered slightly bigger than it needs to be. We can actually pretend like we fixed it by making this number smaller. But it still don't still don't fix it. Maybe it's not actually equilateral the formula. I don't know. Seems a little bit off to me. There we go. Fixed it. There we go. Mr. Dick still, I've, I've, I've returned the tip, don't you worry. Um, yeah, so that was a bit of a diversion. But anyway, sync code, does it really work? Um, so let's take a look in, into, you know, we need to, so at least we we'll fix some bugs in HCC, right? Thank you, Perry. Appreciate this detail, you've made us go down. Exactly, I'm kept pain. <laughs> um, so, we've added this synchronization code in now, so we're saying, hey, we're doing a write only on this guy. But if I take it away, it doesn't like it. Um, so, why is that? Because we did this, right? And then it crashes. Um, so it's saying that the new layout must not be undefined. Oh, are we not clearing the count? Okay, that's it then. This is good, this is good, this is good. We're not clearing the count. GPU dispatch. We go over all of the resources that have been synced for this dispatch, and then we essentially set them up for the... So if we have resources, we do a barrier dispatch, go over all the ones that we use for the barrier, and make the after mode, access mode, the before access mode, and clear the access mode. And we've got to clear the array. So now if we run it, so we should be seeing some flickering here, but the triangle is not big enough. Like, cause we, we should, we're writing, right, we should see, mm. have we got any debug logging on? Right, let's just all one on that. So let's see, let's use the API dump. Here we go. So API dump just launches everything into the terminal. You can get it to go to a file and everything if you want. But what we're looking for is a command dispatch. So if we look for dispatch, we've got, see there's a pipeline barrier that comes after and this takes it from general to present, right? Now, you've not got a barrier in between here, right? You got a barrier up here to take it from undefined to general. Right, this is the surface. So basically, yeah, we should be getting some ish. Like the code is finds the point where we should be getting some problems. So if we up this number to, let's say, let's times it by four. Go into the shader. So times about four is two fifty six. 
which means this is probably just like 200. We should be getting some... I don't know. We should be getting some sync issues here. But it's not happening. Maybe because the way it's being scheduled... Yeah, this is sync issue. <laughs> Although this is the uninitialized memory. But I'm expecting to see some something going on where it's just being weird. But I think the way it's launching the compute units is it's basically like these ones down here or something that go last maybe like but they could they should be all, all out of order really but anyway i don't know anyway it's working at least yeah i'll, I'll commit those changes maybe i can up yeah maybe i can make it a bit bigger so 256, 256. Let's try one more time. See if we get any problems. Then we want to go to 1024, 1024, and then probably like 800. I'm expecting to see prob. I've seen no issues. Wait, have we got the sync code on that one? I turned it off, right? Yeah, yeah, no sync. It's weird. Oh well. It's fine. Doesn't... I'm not sure, like, the driver must be... Must be doing something. Right, so if we run it with the debug on, okay, we should see the barrier in there now. Hey, I want that to be bigger. There we go. So we should be seeing the uh, the barrier in there now. So there's a dispatch, right? Here's the barrier taking it from before it was right being written to and after it's being written to as well uh, put in an actual barrier in there to stop it from right to synchronize between the two dispatches so it's correct there you go yeah base like we're doing a sine distance for a triangle because i was just going to do a square but Perry misses the triangles. So he wanted to see a Vulcan triangle. So we we gone and put one in. And in doing so, it basically was like a whole probably 50 minute diversion in fixing a couple of compiler bugs. But it's been good, I guess. We've got the compiler bugs sorted out. So now what we can do, so I don't think we've actually added um, any problems with the Windows build. So we can go ahead and actually commit this now. I want to probably do some HTC stuff. Commit that, you know. Uh, git status, git commit dash a. So we've done a couple of, um, you know, fix, fix a couple of like uint. Or integer, oh, sorry, fix integer conversion and oh, bug and implement like negate uint um, spivy. Cool. So let's push that up. Then what we want to do is go over to get, uh, the game van engine and we want to commit this as well. So let's look at the status quick. A couple of files in, in here, new ones. I want to delete that log. 
I don't know if we should really be logging out just yet. It's not really useful. So I might want to go into... Where do we log out to that VK? This thing. I really don't care about this. Um, yeah. Just check it compiles quick, still runs. Very nice. So we're going to do a git add dot. Wait a minute. I want to get the latest HCC build over. Can I do that? Um, make a release build. So it's got the optimizations and therefore will compile quicker. Um, so I just want to quickly shoot over and grab the release package. Shoot the executable in into the third party which means I need to do the Windows one actually because the Windows build is actually broken oops crap I can't do the Windows one though from my Linux desktop so uh, there you go so I have to fix that um, yeah I'll fix it off stream obviously which is a shame so with you know finish sync code uh, GPU sync code or resource sync code um, missing new hcc.exe binary will come in a future commit shoot I need to log into bash do the bash dance because I still not fix this problem Uh, git push origin and there we go so those of you who have access to the code and want to have a play you can download it but then again if you're on windows oh I haven't fetched I ain't fetched yet which means got to do a bloody merge Oh, I need to config, isn't it? Right. I'll just do, I'll just do a merge. I've already I've not done re rebases before. Right, so it seems to have merged without any conflicts. Let's do a git log and see what it looks like. Um. So there, there, we push this and we do, yeah, do a merge. Excellent, excellent. All right, so push the new main up there, do a log. They're both there, that's good. Sweet. So yeah, those of you who you have access to the code, you can go and pull that down and have a play. Are there any performance differences between you and, 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 and compute? No, not really. It's just I wanted to, I, want, I wanted an actual signed number. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those really. Yeah, I wanted a signed number and the, the intrinsic wasn't signed. Life is lovely, we can boot your Raspberry Pi off an SSD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I remember those, S, those SD cards used to always break 
and you always just have to reinstall your operating system. It was really weird. And the way you get around it is by making your SD card read only. It was really strange. Um, cool. So, what is next on the agenda? So you might be able to see it in the title. That is an upload buffer. So why do we need an upload buffer? What problem does it solve? So what we have is these resources. We can create buffers and textures, but we basically can't do it. We can do stuff with them. We can write to them in a shader, but in no way can the CPU upload any data unless it's pre-compiled into the shader and the shader writes the data out, okay? So we need a way to actually upload to these textures and buffers. So how do you do that in Vulkan? So in OpenGL and obviously in WebGPU, you have the ability to map a resource or you have the ability to buffer. I think in, in OpenGL it's GL buffer data or sub buffer data. And that's essentially upload to a buffer. Right, and in OpenGL you also have map buffer, and you get back a CPU visible pointer, and you can write to that pointer and read and write to the buffer. Right? Yeah, so the W, the WebGPU. So WebGPU also has map, but mapping is like really bad because basically, unless you're on it, unless you're you're on an integrated graphics card mapping like the, like the Vulkan API prefers if you the Vulkan and the, and the, and the DirectX APIs basically prefer it if you use one buffer for one type of buffer for uploading and another type of buffer for reading back and having them separate you can technically get away from them being in the same in the same buffer, but they generally prefer it to be different. Um, and also the other problem is, is these buffers and textures that we create here in the, in the back end that we've written, we've purely designed, we've purely designed it so they're GPU only, meaning you can't map them unless you've got rebar enabled on your AMD GPU, which basically makes the whole most of the address space on the GPU accessible from the CPU. But by default, a lot of devices, for now at least, don't have CPU visible memory. It's only visible from the GPU when you have it local to the GPU device. Um, so the ma so map APIs are generally not the best. The best thing to do typically is, um, design a specific abstraction in the GPU library, which is like a staging buffer or an upload buffer as we're gonna call it. And you simply say, I want to upload to this resource. And then, so let's try the API. So we wanna be able to say GPU, Uh, GPU upload right you just upload some data where are we uploading it to um, to a resource ID and then we, we simply you know maybe you say upload to a buffer or upload to a texture and so to upload to a buffer, there's an offset and a size. You'll get back a void pointer to that. Okay. Then you have upload to a texture. You have a uint3 offset and a uint3 size. Then you probably have 
you might be targeting a specific MIP level and you might also be targeting a range of array layers. Um, but yeah, that one is, that just makes it really complicated and only if we need it, I guess, should we add it. Hmm. Because you'd have to say base MIP, sorry, base array layer. Or maybe just say array layer. Something like that. Let's take a look at, at the chat. I think in a way Git struggles with your GitLab key. Might be because the name, as far as I know, it also adds the ID. Is it really? Oh. So I should rename the key in that, in that. So the name of my key is GitLab RSA. So it should be ID underscore GitLab RSA. Okay. Thank you. I'll take a look into that. Doesn't that work with map? So a map buffer though. Yes. Yes. So internally, this upload buffer is going to be like internally, we're going to make a resource behind the scenes uh, or a buffer behind the scenes, which is the staging buffer. That itself is going to be mapped. And then we're going to get, get back a pointer that we're right to it. But we specifically make that one CPU visible and designed for uploading. And then that'll be fine. I used to have a transfer buffer in my map. Yeah, put stuff in separate key. Yep, that's right. Uh -huh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Stage and buffers, that's right. So we could do could do that, I guess. It's okay. Um so when you get back this point you write to the texture in a linear fashion, and that should be good. Uh so yeah, let's go and implement these guys. I guess we'll call it resource upload and there will be resource readback in the future when we actually need it. So let's find this guy. Hmm. So how do we implement these? So what we need to do is we need to, we need, well, so we're going to initialize with We need to initialize an upload buffer at a certain size. And then Yeah, so it might be a constant somewhere. Maybe it's in the internals, I think. Tab new source GPU internals, right? So we'll probably just throw like, hey, what is the GPU upload buffer size? So I'd be like, well, the size is maybe 64K and it maybe it needs to be bigger. Maybe we'll make it like eight megabytes. See, we, we can define like megabytes and stuff like that, isn't it? Should we do that? It'd be pretty handy. Um, put it in core. Just chuck it somewhere down here, define core megabyte. V times 1024 times kilobyte, gigabyte. Let's 
ought to be good enough. So that'll make it a bit easier to read. So eight megabytes, please. Right. So the idea is you want to have in the global GPU structure, we're going to store some form of like, what is the upload buffer index or like cursor, right? Now, effectively we need to like allocate, we need to somehow get the size Yeah, that's true. It is my coat. Oh, it might be. Yeah. That could be men in black. You know? Gotta be careful. No, oh, okay. No wonder why it's been in trigger with say coding. Um. Okay, so I forgot the level, uh, I forgot how it should work under the hood precisely, but let's just pretend like, pretend like we know for a second. Basically what we need to do is we need, right, the backend's gonna have a maps memory address. Yes, right, I think I know. The backend will have a maps memory address. So you just need to provide the back end with um so you'll get the sort of like I guess let's call it PTR. You'll say GP backend upload buffer. You'll pass in the res ID, the offset, and the size. Right? This and then it we'll have the mapped buffer, sorry, the mapped pointer for the upload buffer and give you back the pointer. Then you need to store the fact that, like, So you, so we're going to manually place it into a buffer. So the, the whole basic idea of how this works is you make an upload buffer here and, and you sort of like, say you're going to upload to it and you upload to this part here, say, right. And you do another upload and then you upload to this part here. So you've got two different uploads. Then in GPU memory somewhere, you've got a buffer there and another buffer here, right? Well, this, you need to say, hey, this update was specifically for that part of the buffer here. So at the start of the frame, copy it there for me, please. And then at the start, and also at the start of the frame, can you copy this one to here, right? This one gets filled in. So what we need to do is we need to store some information in an array somewhere to say, hey, there's, a, there's an upload that's happened. So what we should do is probably have in the internals a couple of um, type dev structure, GPU resource, buffer entry, Wait a minute. Um, so this one's going to say, hey, this resource is the one that we're targeting. And we are targeting a offset and that offset and then this size so 
at the like as so as soon as we call frame start we're gonna call into the back end and say hey here's all the uploads and then it will create a bunch of transfer commands to happen right at the start of the frame and then it'll put in some synchronization points as well so what we need to do is say texture 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 and then this one's going to take in all the arguments here basically all these guys okay so all these two different entries again we don't have custom arrays yet or anything like this so we're just going to hard code some array of 32 or something and just get on with with getting this thing in so we need basically the upload buffer um, entries let's do 32 upload texture entries now one thing that we forgot right is they don't have a source offset so we need to actually store in here a source offset so this is all DST, 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 right? And we need to actually store a 32, probably a U32 source offset. And that's the source offset into the upload buffer. So you can take it from the source location of here and then dump in the destination location of here, right? So that's all it is. And voila. So let's let's get this array array filled in. Um, we're gonna have texture count. So what a cursor as well. We're gonna bump. Well, the bump allocate. See, I don't know the size. Should we should we leave that entirely up to the back end to know the size, bump it, and keep track of it? I think we should. And we're just going to keep track of this. So what we really need to get back as well is a source offset into the actual buffer. So we're going to pull out Something like this. Um, so we could make two two different backend calls, right? We could say, hey, size. Well, we already have the size here. Well, we can we can already work it out to be honest, actually. But you need to say to the back end, we're going to be doing this anyway. Um, so I think we can say the source offset is equal to ggpu dot this. Then at the end, the source of the cursor will be updated by that. I want to do a chorus set. Uh, is there like an array bounds check? Yeah. So the index is this. No, it's kind of like a resize, isn't it? Yep. GPU upload buffer size. Size is a terrible name, it's capacity. Cool. Right, so we're calling to the back end. We'll say we want this region. We get back the pointer. Um, because you might need to invalidate the caches. Um. Let's think about that. You might need to invalidate the 
No, you won't. No, it's fine. You need the size though. Some of that. So now we need to get ourselves a entry point. And then entry equals buffer entries ggpu ggpu upload buffer entries counts then we need to add the one as well we should definitely check this but again we'll do the dynamic arrays and that will do the checking for us in the future anyway now we need to fill in entry so source offset is source offset um, Destination resource ID is res ID. Destination offset is offset. Size and destination. Well, it's not really destination size, it should just probably be called size. Because it's the size that you're copying. So the copy size, right? Um, okay. So then you inc you bump the cursor and then you return the pointer. The user writes to that pointer. Then at the start of the frame, it will queue that up. Awesome. That was alignment as well, isn't there? Um. Does the data have to be aligned? I don't think it does. Let's have a, let's have a look. We're looking for, we're looking specifically for Buffer to image copy, isn't it? VK command buffer to image. Copy regions for image must be aligned to a text or block. Doesn't say anything about alignment. Wait, this is buffer to image, sorry. Can I say buffer to buffer? Doesn't mention alignment in any way. Let's look at this. It doesn't mention a line in any way. There's no restrictions. What has to be aligned is the memory allocation itself. Um, yeah. Hey there, Nico. How you doing? Welcome, Nico. How's things been? Um, how um, I think what you're talking about is the buffer image granularity. Yeah, it's not that. Non-coherent atomic size for some physical device limits. Interesting. Let's take a look at that. Maybe. That does ring a bell, but I'm not sure. Well, mm, typically when you up... Mm, hmm...
Is the separation of backend and GPU files necessary? Yes, because if I want to port this to another platform, I just implement the backend on another platform. And the reason why you keep them separate is because they could be, um, one, they could be in another lang, like, yeah, I could stick them all in one big GPU.c file. That can work. But, yeah, it just means... Yeah, it just means I can just compile them out, though. And it doesn't have to scan over all the code. Um, Because they, they do get quite big sometimes. Yeah, I think it's typically quite fine. It doesn't mention that atomic thing in any way. But it does ring, does ring a bell in some way. Um, yeah, the size maybe, that makes sense. Yeah, and that, that works the alignment exactly. Mm. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Very true. No worries. So, the texture one, basically the same thing, right? Okay, all we're gonna do is simply replace the word buffer with texture here. So what we need to do is work out, wait a minute, I just realized something. All right, we need to calculate the actual size. Yes, so maybe I can call it, maybe I can call it extent here. Wait, we make the texture, what do we, do we call it dims, isn't it? We'll call it dims. Dim. Damn straight, welcome, 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 thank you for the follow. Dims. Right, so what we want to do in here is we need to calculate how how big in bytes is this is this upload gonna be? So we take dims, we want to do a multiple oh, I hate doing this. So you want to get the resource resource equals GPU resource get res ID. So we need to say Z times the width. Wait a minute. Or is it bytes per pixel? Yeah, so you need to get the bytes per pixel, which I've got to do that. Format bytes per pixel. Resource uh, texture format. Yep. So we need to make this function. We then need to say, hey, um, based on, do we just multiply? I think we multiply them all. Like we just say X times Y times, I think I've got a function for that. It's like product elements there we go dims multiplied by bytes per pixel and that tells you how much 
you need to make room in the upload buffer for. Then you kind of want to get the, you kind of want to say get the right pointer for it. Upload buffer right pointer. We'll call it something like that. Um, give it a source offset and a size so it can probably do some, some things there. Wait, does it need... I don't think you need to pass in the size. I think you only need to pass in a source offset because you can invalidate the whole range in one go, I think, at the start of the buff, when we actually, at the, at the start of the frame. Um, and did someone ask, well, would it be a frame delayed? It won't be a frame delayed. Um, hmm. So let's Im implement this guy here quick. So where's the format? So we're returning a U32. We're gonna take in a GPU format. Uh, we're then going to go to buffer initialize, drop. Mm. It can just be a lookup table, right? So bytes per pixel for these guys are just like four, right? Cool. So you use the bytes per pixel and that's fine. Upload buffer cursor. Um, so we get the right pointer. We've got to declare this still. It's fine though. Then we get our right point to which we will return. Mm. See, we keep calling into this back end. But realistically, we could just have one upload buffer. Because for, for this game, we can just be like the size that we need. We just pre-calculate that and just say it's a fixed size. We don't have to keep allocating any more. So I guess we can get the back end when we initialize it to just set something on the outside. And we don't have to keep calling into the back end to fetch it. I think instead we can just say we can store it here. Upload buffer mapped memory. Right. So we can literally just say, have we got like a core point to add? We have, good. So ggpu dot source offset. And we don't have to call into the back end and it's just that. Um, then that's good. So now we have to fill in this entry thing. So it's just entry um dims equal dims entry destination mip level mip level and then a race slice if we need anything more complicated or to do a range of race slices we can fix that but that'll be for now so pretty good so this is the front end Right, but we now need to do the back end. So, how do we how do we do the back end? So we first need to actually initialize this buffer. That's step one. So, in the actual source GPU 
back in Vulcan, we need to do a do a VK create buffer. So we've got this like backend create buffer thing. So we need to steal all of this code and do a, a very specific one for the upload buffer. And the reason why we've done it separate and we're going to copy paste this code and change it is because by making it by specifically designing it for or breaking it into these separate concepts, it's made each of them more simple, right? They're, they're less flexible, meaning they can be more targeted. So it's so simple, in fact, that our, when we create our buffer, we just take in one size parameter, uh, and there's a, there's a debug name as well. One size parameter, uh, instead of like all of these parameters, right? Or, or not really all of them, but yeah, you see what I'm saying. Um, and also to do with actually allocating memory on the device or CPU visible is stuff like this. Okay, so we would need to go to backend initialize at the bottom somewhere like that. Yeah, underneath this. I want to do another thing where it's say create the upload buffer. Damn it. Delete my thing. So we're going to edit this code to be specific. What's the size of this thing? Well, remember we made that constant upload buffer cap, right? What is the usage of this? Well, it's not storage. It's not used in any shader, is it? Uh, it's not a transfer destination, but instead it's a transfer source, right? Go to these. They're specifically for using it in on the GPU. Nothing else about using it on the CPU, except for transfer source. Then the sharing mode concurrent, I guess. Nice. Then the place where this goes is there will be a um, there will be a place where we can just throw this. Um, I guess let's put it here. VK buffer upload buffer, and then we'll have a VK device memory. Oh. Memory upload buffer device memory. So we're just going to fill upload buffer uh, G GP Vulcan. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So create that. Bam. So there's the buffer created, but it's not that simple in Vulcan. What do you have to do? You have to actually allocate some memory next. So we need to get the memory requirements so we can get get the alignment and everything. Um, so this just gets the size and align. And then we need to actually allocate it. So this memory type needs to be specific for an upload buffer. We'll um, do that one in a minute. We'll get the, the memory type for that. So we'll just have to change our add another thing to our system that we made yesterday. Oh, sorry, on Sunday's stream. Then we have this device memory, so we actually allocate the device memory. Then we bind the memory to the buffer. And there we go, so that creates the upload buffer, but it's not finished yet because of this. So let's quickly make that. Memory type upload buffer. How do we make that? So yesterday we went over all about the memory types and everything like this. So we need to add a new one of these. So after we create the create info, we want to do an upload buffer memory type so you fetch the site the information 
um, when you what you get back from from the memory requirements is some memory requirement sorry some memory type bits for all the support memory types we've got this nice convenience function which can go over all the memory types that are supported and finds the one that we're looking for and what we're looking for is ideally we prefer it to be memory type oh that's where we're going to get lost we prefer it to be coherent coherent means that it will automatically flush the caches for us. No, but I've heard things about that where you don't want it to do that. Because it makes the driver do more work apparently. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna do that one. Let's turn that off. I think I've heard reasons against, against using that. Hmm. Should we do a quick Google? VK memory property Yeah, so speed implications are uh, maybe I read this somewhere. But make use of staging buffer and populate populate and copies of GP memory. In most tutorials, I've seen that they use the host coherent. However, my understanding is it means it is not cache. What's the advantage of MF? My understanding is the coherent bit means you don't have to manually flush the cache ranges. That's correct. The CPU slash GPU manage things in sync for you. Caching behavior, at least, the CPU perspective is separate. From the, yeah, that's correct. I'm unaware of any performance differences between the two. Oh, okay, that's useless then. Yeah, I read somewhere that there has to be some extra management by the driver. But I don't know. Right. Jeremy implies that memory would be right combined. Some devices is possible to allocate. Hmm, doesn't mention anything there. I think maybe we can include it. It'd be interesting to see if there's a performance difference or not. Yeah, I might just manually flush it. Because like, I would have to put an if statement in anyway to check if it has the coherent bit thing anyway. You know, it's just weird. So we require it to be host visible. Right, and we don't, we prefer it to not be device local, right? Prefer it to not be device local. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it must have extra management, right? It must do. That's my thinking. So maybe we should put a to-do here, right? Right. To-do. Check if is slower, right? Um. So basically now we've got that memory type index we can actually allocate from the correct heap with the correct memory type. Complete rocket science as we saw last stream. So now we created the buffer. Awesome. What's the next thing we need to actually do? 
So now we have the buffer of the ready. Oh, we didn't map that. We haven't mapped the memory yet. So now we need to do some mapping of the memories. How does one map memory? So because we've got host visible, we can call map memory. There's a map memory too for some reason. I forgot what that does. It, it allows for multiple maps, doesn't it? And there's a flag. Hmm. It's got absolutely nothing in it. It's all for extensions. I entirely doubt map memory two is going to be that much better. Let's just use the standard one because it's just less rocket science, you know. So we need to add a new, add a new function pointer so we can actually use it. And then we're going to say ggpvk dot map memory. Then we map the memories. Um, we need a device, ggpvk dot device, vk device. We need the actual memory. So this is this one. We're then mapping, what's the offset? Zero. We're mapping the whole buffer. So the reason why you might not want to map the whole buffer is because if, if you're in a 32-bit system, you only have a limited address space, like really limited. So you don't want to map everything. You, you kind of want to unmap and map. But if you're on 64-bit, just map the whole thing. Done. Right? Um, the flags are zero. And then you get the pointers to come out. We're going to put the pointer in ggpu dot upload buffer maps memory. Okay, so the outer part of the code base can use that. Then there is a VK result. So we do really need to wrap it in this GPU VK assert. Hmm, yep, yeah. right. Cool, so that maps the memory. So now we can actually use that and write to it, which we have code for already now. So the next thing to do, so ideally we wanna have an assertion in these to say, hey, don't upload if you've started the frame, right? So we really don't know if we've started a frame or not. Um, so we so we do really need a way to sort of say, I guess boolean So we'll just say ggpu dot this equal true. And then when you submit false it, right? Then, you know, really you should say course uh, So you wanna say, um, GPU frame start. must be called first and then before starting another frame and then you also need in these guys right wait a minute done it this one wants to be a knot this one wants to be a knot and then you want to say that Basically, um, so GPU upload star must come before GPU frame star, right? So we need those in there, some checks. So in here, on which you start the frame in the back end, we're gonna go over all of those Wait a minute, we need to clear out these. So when you end the frame, we'll clear these to zero, yeah? And then what we're gonna do
then what we're going to do is iterate over these and actually do some copies. So right about, there's a transition that goes on here and it transitions our swap chain image from undefined to general. So kind of like somewhere around here after you've bound all the descriptor sets, I guess. What you want to do is go over all of those 0 g gpu dot upload buffer entries and then you want to effectively begin there so there is like a a command buffer copy buffer to Is it because it can do multiple re it's got this thing on it as well. Should we just use copy buffer, the original one? Yeah, I don't know. Does it have any ex any extensions that are worth it? Like what's cop copy buffer to do? Um The extending structure, what's the extending structure? Must be null. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they don't have any extensions yet, so I don't know why they've done it. Right. So we need this function pointer at some point, but let's just set it all up. So we need the command buffer, we need the source buffer, which we're copying from the upload buffer, remember? Let's get the image. Here's the upload buffer here. Okay. And then here's one of the destination buffers. So we need to say dot upload buffer. Destination buffer needs to be entry okay I think we'll say DST resource backend buffer um, now there's these regions so there's one copy region and then we part take the address of the region and we'll declare the region buffer copy Now, it's probably going to be one of those S type. Oh no, it isn't good. Right, so it's got a source offset, destination offset, and a size. Pretty easy to fill in. So, source offset would just be the offset into the upload buffer that we gave them the pointer that they wrote to. Um, so, that is will be stored in entry source offset because we kept track of that. Then we want DST resource back end sorry what was what am I doing uh, destination offset we stored in there as well and then again in entry we stored the size okay so that's will just be on this. so now so for every one of those we issue a copy command then we need to actually get the entry so the entry will be It's all the way over there, isn't it? Yeah, it's this one here, right? It's got the source offset, these guys here. Okay. And we need to make sure we load uh, ggpu upload buffer entries index. Then what we want to do is fetch the resource dst resource gp resource get see if we have to keep getting it oh yeah maybe it's fine yep then we also want to get the back end which has the back end 
stuff. Like so. We just need to add these two lovely functions into here. These are a couple of copy commands. So we'll probably stick them somewhere like here. To image is the other one we're about to do. So we've got our function pointers in there. Nothing called buffer apparently. Um, VK buffer. GGPU Vulcan. Awesome. There we go. So this will do end up doing the copy. Um, now we want to do the copy for the buff for the images now. So this is now texture, texture. This one will be texture here. Then this will be a to image, to image copy, to image. What is the sync strategy? Uh, submit, wait on queue. No. Yeah, what we do is we, so the, the way it works is we have a command buffer that we're filling in on the CPU while the command buffer is being read from on the GPU. So this is GPU, this is CPU. So this one gets filled up on the CPU while the GPU reads this one. Um, Currently it's only double buffered. So as soon as this one is ready, it sends that to the GPU. And then when the GP and the GPU will start reading from it, right? And then when this one is done, the CPU will re reuse it and it will write the next frame in. So you, so there are problems where if the CPU is too slow to fill in the command buffers, Sorry, uh, yeah, if the GPU runs for too long, the CPU will, thread will, will lock and it won't produce a, a frame. But yeah, like, but it, it is much better than making a command buffer, sending it to the GPU, then waiting, and then sending another, and then doing another one after. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. Ah, huh. I think it's called a buffer image copy. That's it. This one's slightly different. It has some extra bells and whistles. Um, so it's got buffer offset. This is our source offset has a row length. I think you can just say zero. Hmm. VK buffer image copy. I think you can just specify zero. Row length is going to assume that they're all linear. That's what I want to do. Must be zero. Yep. So if you say zero, you're basically saying that it's packed. There's no padding between the rows. And then image height again. There's another, that's another one packed between the slices. And then there's a sub resource. Not a fan of these. Hey there, lost, lost side dead. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. Image sub resource. I keep forgetting these. Wait a minute. Uh. 
Boo. Aspect mask is VK, aspect mask color. MIP level is entry MIP level. Base array layer is entry array layer. Then we've got one array layer. Um, I think that's right. Is that Vim? Yes, it's technically Neo Vim, but yeah, basically Vim. Offset.x. Mm. I should have a conversion function for that, right? What does it need? Is it a uh, offset 3D? Mm -hmm. Um, offset 3D, offset 3D, X, Y, Z. So that just makes it easier to convert that over. Find the upload. Um, so the offset into the texture is offset 3D. entry destination offset and then vk extent entry destination no wait it's just um dims isn't it destination mip level that's why cool awesome so to change the function and right destination image and VK image layout transfer destination. Yes, cool. So looking at this code, you might think, great, you're now copying the resources or the data to the resources and it's awesome. But actually we need to do some, we need to do for the images, these things called layout transitions. It's a, it's a bugger. Um, so firstly, what I want to do is actually make sure that we put We probably want to make sure we don't go out of bounds here and do some error checking. And then we need to do some layout transitions actually. I'm new here, I want to alter complete C++ words in Vim. I don't know how Google can't find a way. You want to set up the LSP side of things. So it's, it's a bit complicated, but I recommend you, I think TJ did a video who um who sort of he works on NeoVim. Um so I think it's called NVim Kickstart. Yeah this one. Take a look at this this video. I'm sure I'm sure you are all into videos like me. Um yeah, it, it basically like there's a, a, a great startup config for Vim that you can sort of take and tweak to your liking. And it comes set up with an LSP and stuff like this. Like setting up an LSP is, if you don't know NeoVim well, like the people who make, make it is, is, it's not straightforward. I tried to set up by following instructions. It was not straightforward.
Yeah, I think the primogen has one as well. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, but this one's more of like a, a config you can just take and just edit it, and it's all laid out and commented, which is really nice. Um, so here, we just want to do a super lovely assertion where we just say like, hey, make sure for me that the resource that you're looking at, um, buffer dot size, make sure that the offset is less than size and offset plus size is less than or equal to. So what we're saying is, is like, we just want to put in like, you know, ZU dot dot ZU. So like, we're saying um, upload target exceeds the bounds of the buffer. So we just throw those in there, it's pretty buffer size. So we just throw offset, offset plus size. Then we'll also throw in resource buffer size. Right, that's super nice. So there is, you kind of got to do one for the texture as well. It's a little bit more complicated. For the texture, well, it's not, it's not more complicated. Yeah, it's just, it's just three dimensional, right? So it's just offset dot X texture dims dot X and offset dot X. But really, so you could do each coordinate one by one X, Y, Z, or you could do all of them. Um, yeah, let's just do one by one. Dims dot X texture dims dot X. So upload target exceeds the texture X dim dimension. So it's offset dot X dot X dims dot X. Yeah, texture dims dot x. Right, let's just duplicate that three times. Search for the x and replace for a y. Bing. Replace for a z. And voila. Now, I think we're missing a like there might be some more silly things like, oh, it can't be zero. And like the size can't be zero. Or like, if the size is zero, just return a lovely null, right? And then like, if the So if you're saying, if they're all equal zero, that's not easy to do. Yeah, all G, E, Q, G. I think you need the mass slope, we got it. Yeah, it exists. What are you talking about? Oh, I didn't put a comma in there. There we go. So if they're all zero, they're doing it. Awesome. So these MIPS as well. MIPS can go out of space. What about heaps? What about them?
I'm not sure you mean about heaps. We've allocated the memory from a heap already, of the buffers. Um, if the MIP, MIP. Uh, texture MIP levels. Yeah, it must be. We need to say target X, Y, Z, target MIP level. Probably just be a U on that one. MIP levels. Probably just be a U on that one as well. Which means that would be MIP level and resource texture. MIP levels. Array layer. Array layer. Array layers. And array layers. So. Pretty close, pretty close now. So the thing we want to do now is we have to put some lovely, lovely, lovely synchronization code. Cause we've got a transition. These into transfer destination optimal. So all of these textures need to go from whatever state they were in to transportation destination optimal, then translated back into whatever they were in after that. Yeah. So it's actually quite simple. It's just more pipeline barrier code, but yes. Um, but yeah. So I think So we, we could just go and steal that other code, right? It's not too difficult. This one. Plop that in there. So this is the barrier code we literally just did today to do the sync code, proper sync code. And then we got distracted with that triangle that Perry wanted us to render. <laughs> that was just really bad. Um, so we're simply just getting the number of textures. So we don't done any buffer barriers, just image barriers. Um, we're going to assert it's not a buffer. Ah, uh, don't worry about assertions. Be fine. Yes, yeah, it, it worked out in the end, right? Yeah, it worked out in the end. Damn it, Perry. But but we, we fixed two bugs, so in all honesty, it was good. We fixed two bugs in the compiler. So I'm happy about that. So I need to get the entry. Yeah, we get the entry. Entry destination resource, get the back end sync state. Um, good point. GP resource ID index, entry destination. G GP resource sync states. Is that a thing? It is. Good. So we need to get the current sync state. 
um, which would be in the before sync states. Get the current image memory barrier. So the before one will be, hey, it was using a compute shader. Um, potentially, but it might not be. Right, maybe, maybe this image is the uploading to is simply has just been created and it's undefined, right? So you only really know actually. Mm, well, it could, it could be none, right? So you kind of want to get the old image layout. Then I think you want to say, hey, if that thing is undefined, we'll make this undefined. Um, yeah, so I think you want to say, hey, if this is image layout. Undefined. Exactly, we've used it in the code base. Why didn't that work? So it's, if it's undefined, we want to use VK pipeline none, but if not, it came from a compute shader. Sweet. If what did this do again? Right, if not, it'll do zero, which is basically none anyway. Yeah, so we can happily call into there. Cool. Um, so destination is going to be, we need to transition it into using it for trans, transfer. See, we've got to look at those pipeline stage flags again, because I don't really remember this. Vault VK pipeline stage flags two. We want to see what does transfer actually mean? Is it a combination and is there a better one? So it's a combination of all these. We want probably copy. Oh, that way that's all transfer. What? Oh, these are all special bits. It doesn't specify what transfer is, but I imagine it's... So copy, is that only on the... Copy commands. Yeah, maybe we only need copy then. Like, if it's wrong, the Vulcan validation error will just complain. So we're saying that the destination mask is... What's the destination mask? It will be... Sorry, the destination as access mask. So the host, you're reading from the host. Wait a minute. Oh, ooh. We need to make sure our upload buffer has been transitioned as well. This is so annoying. Yeah, the upload buffer needs to be transitioned into that. Yeah, it's just all the manual things, Nozilla, it's just um it's just pretty crazy. You you hope you can get it done with speed and then you just gotta worry about all the extra states, you know? Vulcan. Cries in Vulcan. <laughs> uh, 
So this is talking about the actual image and the image is being written to by a transfer. That's what it's saying. It's a transfer rate. Yeah, oh my days, that was bad. I I kind of like cheated as well where I like um where I pre-made the engine for the game jam. Why well, I didn't cheat, right? Because people who would have used engines would use an engine anyway. But yeah, I pre-made the engine in the game before the game jam, like a whole month. Um. So, transfer right specifies. Right, so it's a copy. Okay. Okay. Weird. A new way of doing it, apparently. So, old layout, new layout. Specifically, the reason why we're doing this is because we want to be on image layout, transfer. Destination optimal. Ignore all that crap. And voila. So this should be zero and null now. And then guess what? We copy this whole code again. So the reason why we copy this whole code again is because we need to transition it back. Wait a minute, do we need to do it for all resources? Or is it for... Wait, you need to do it for all resources. Copy. From whatever it was in. To a copy, yeah you do. Damn it, synchronization code. So we need that copy back for the buffer. Uh, Vulcan. And then you want to simply say temp allocate these buggers in the future, please. Okay, so for the buffer, you want the same sort of thing. Copy those source acts, these masks there. The old layout though, like has it been used in a compute Shader yet. Well, you can tell based on the access mode if that is equal to zero. Yeah, so really we could have just done that. That's the ultimate thing. And this can just be moved down. Damn it. Yep. It's better that way. Right, so now we just have to do the inverse and transfer it back. Um, yeah, so typically if you had like a better sort of like work graph system, like, or a render graph, frame graph, whatever you want to call it, you can actually like leave it in this state and only transition it when you need to, um, like at the right time. But yeah, we're, we're not bothering with any of that complication for a good, good while. We just need to get the necessities in. So this transitions in for it, for it to be copied to, and this one transitions it out of it. Um, so you go over, all my days. All my days. Uh, 
I just realized this distinctly separate and separate arrays. Buffer, buffer entry, which means this is only for buffers. And then all these upload buffers. Oh, sorry, all these upload texture entries are only going to be textures. Rightio. So. Now we can finally copy it and then do the inverse. Put it down probably here. Yep. So this is taking it from. Wait, was the source aspect mask wrong? Source is coming. From... Oh, it could be from oh, it's this again, isn't it? See where it's coming from. No, 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 no. Sorry, we've done that right. This needs to be access stage two. Oh, damn it. I copied and pasted this and it was the pipeline stage one. Wrong one. Okay. Transfer right is on for a clear or copy operation. Perfect. Transfer right bit. Oh, that'd have been, that'd have been really bad actually. Okay. So we're coming from a, so, so we do the uploads. So we transition it into the correct state, do the actual uploads, and then we transition it back out to where it needs to be or where it last was. Um, so to do that, we simply want to make this one, I'm going to, let's correct this first, copy, copy, Transfer. Come on. Transfer right bit. Okay. So effectively, these have got to be swapped. These destination and source has to go the other way around. So it will be DST source, swap them around physically like that. So they're coming from being copied to, to now being in the mode they were before, right? And same thing down here, except for that the image layout needs to also be adjusted to. I'm good at C++. This is C++. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, well. Yeah. I do, I do work in C++ as my, in my day job, but yeah, I typically try and stick to the C side of things. Because simplicity is helps out a bit, quite a bit. Um, so yeah, a whole bunch of code in our faces. This is, this is Vulcan everybody. So we could probably like comment that and maybe, I don't know. Yeah. You know, it just really is up the lines of code doing all these things. Um, but anyway. 
So this should be it. Mm. I don't know if we'll be able to test it. Because... Like... We don't really have our descriptor sets being set yet anyway. And... Yeah, we don't have our descriptor sets being set up yet. There's other things as well. Anything I missed from C++? Pretty much nothing. Yeah, they're, they're super nice, the initializers in C. C++ has a very limited version of these, so you have to do them in the right order in C++, whereas in C they can go out of order if you want. And you can in, you can initialize sub substructures in C as well, and you get the array initializers as well in C. Um, right. Yeah, I also think... Like, another interesting one is like, maybe you can just write to the upload buffer and use the upload buffer itself as just a temporary place where you grab the memory from and just pull it out. And you can just read the upload buffer directly in the the, the compute shader. So maybe, maybe we'll add another feature as well where we say like upload buffer um, manual, something like that. And you you get back out a you get back out a source offset, and you can pass that into a compute shader and and like. Yeah, you can pass that into a compute shader and uh, actually use the buffer, the upload buffer itself, which would be interesting. Um, so yeah, that one will simply just be... Wait, we need a size, isn't it? Uh, what is source offset? And you just deref the source offset. Oh, let's chuck that one in there like that. Yeah, that'll be pretty, pretty good. Oh. <laughs> yeah, C minus minus. <laughs> um, yeah, so this code needs a little bit of a clean up as well. And also, um, we probably should document some of this as well before we actually finish this. Um, what what else is actually left? We might need to transition the. Where's the to dos? All right, they're right here. So as a sub thing of this, we need to make sure that we transition the upload buffer in Vulkan. Well, okay, to compute shader. For compute shader access, um, for transfer, 
at start of frame, then compute shader read access after that. Uh, what else do we need to do? There's also, so that's for this manual thing, so we can use that manual upload. We also need to, we definitely need to like, you know, take a look over the code, um, common and clean code. Because we kind of just rushed it in, just to sort of get stuff done. It's just got to be, it's real, it's just, it, it isn't anything massive, but it's just double check it, right? Um, what else, what else did we kind of miss? miss in this so we're doing this just transition everything it's doing the up running the uploads it's pretty it's pretty good i think we obviously need to implement descriptor we need to upload descriptor sets sorry the descriptor the resource descriptors resource descriptors including the upload buffer itself because we're adding this feature here. Um, what else? Then we should be able to test loading a texture from disk, probably using this STB image or something, and then loading that into a texture, then we'll just copy that to the display. Uh, oh, we also want to ban. We also want to um, ban writing to do. You want to ban uploading to the surface. It's not impossible. We just have to enable We just have to enable the transfer bit. Transfer destination bit, and that's supported on pretty much all devices anyway, I think. I remember looking at that it was. Um but maybe yeah, it should be fine. So that that'll fix that problem. So I think that's all that's left for the upload buffers. So that's pretty good, pretty good progress today. I was pretty happy with that. So we got resource, resource synchronization in. We've got most of the implementation of upload buffers done, just a few little fixes and cleanup code. And then we can move on to actually implementing object pools and memory allocators. So after this, We've kind of got the GPU interface that we kind of want to do the R&D on, right? We'll have creating actual buffers and textures, a way to upload data to them from the CPU, a way to synchronize and dispatch. Shaders, very nice. Uh, so I quickly want to probably put a tag on on this now so i want to say git tag day we're in day five yeah day five then i want to say git let's do that eval thing again and maybe i'll, I'll try and do that do that rename to id underscore gitlab see if that works Okay, then I can do a git push that um, dash dash tags. Wait, does this even compile? It does compile. Interesting. Yeah, but it doesn't work though. Okay. So I'm glad we didn't push that one. Sweet. Interesting. Right. Hmm. OK. 
Okay. So, if anyone's interested in having access to the code, if you follow the link there, you'll be able to see in different ways you can support the channel and get access to the code as a reward. Um, there is a Discord, which is actually there, you just check that out. I do have a Twitter where I post sometimes, and if you want to catch up on any of the previous streams, there is a VOD channel on YouTube, where this will go straight up to YouTube and can be watchable from there. Awesome. Uh, so let's find somebody to raid. Kanji, what was Kanji doing last time? 30 minute nap. Okay. <laughs> oh my days. Good to see you, Glorious Sir. I'm completely knackered right now. My brain is like... It's fried. I need to like... Sleep. Alright, let's raid this guy. He does some CPPs. Making like a, a raycast, a raycasted game, like an old school raycasted game. Right, have a good, um, have a good, good Wednesday and Thursday. I'll see you Thursday at six thirty p.m. GMT plus one, and also, and uh sunday stream is going to be cancelled because there's a family thing going on i'll uh take it out off of the uh, schedule uh i don't eric so otherwise who's that i don't know if i follow him i just i just went through the twitch stuff but yeah oh no no i do follow him he's the game boy guy isn't he yeah He's the, uh, he's the guy who does the Game Boy stuff. Yeah, I've read him a few times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's learning programming through doing Game Boy stuff, which is really cool. It's a good, it's a good way to do it. Like, not starting off as in, in like the web development space and just doing C and Game Boy Homebrew, you know? It's pretty sweet. All right. Thanks, kind of body. I'll see you on the future one. I'm gonna go and go and sleep. <laughs> right. Bye bye.